Good morning, children. Uh, we are here again today. Uh, this is Vivek class. I'm going to teach you the way I used to teach you. Okay. So it's just a little bit different. Uh, we are seeing each other, but we are far away from each other. Okay. Uh, the chapter that I wanted to teach you last time, which I couldn't do with WhatsApp and messaging, is rational numbers. Okay. It's a very important chapter. In terms of like a rational number, if you look at it, it looks like a fraction. Okay, but there's a load and see of difference between fractions and rational numbers. Okay. So if you've got your books with you, if you have a textbooks with you, if you go to page number 54, it's just an introduction. Those of you who don't have textbooks with you, that's not an issue. It says that uh, when civilization developed, there was a need to divide quantities into parts and you know. We had all the integers were there, the numbers were there, then we have the whole numbers, natural numbers. But then sometimes there were cases like, you know, 3 divided by 5, like cases like 3 divided by 5. This would not give us an answer, an integer answer or a natural number would not be there. So in order to counter that, in order to solve the problem, man had to expand. He had to expand the way he computed, the way he used maths. And the way things were done in maths, so came the birth of the rational numbers. Okay, so it says out here a rational number may be any number that can be named in the form a by b. In this book, it says a by b, but wherever you go, you go online, you listen to other teachers. Also, they say it's p by q. P by q. Okay. Whereas a and b are integers and b is not equal to 0 or p and q are integers and q is not equal to 0. Okay, that's the way it is. So the basic concept of a rational number is it's two numbers, two integers, okay, that one integer is dividing the other integer and it's, they are called the numerator and the denominator and the denominator should not be equal to 0. Understood? Because if it becomes 0, if it's like 5 is divided by 0, the answer obviously becomes 0. So that we don't have a fraction sort of a uh, mode, a fraction sort of a image to present in front of you. Okay? So the denominator cannot be 0. Okay? Now, there are a few things that we need to know about rational numbers. If you go to page number 54, again, I would advise you to use your textbook because I'm sure you have it with you. If you don't have it, just try to arrange it from somewhere. Okay. Every natural number is a rational number, but a rational number need not be a natural number. Okay, now listen to this properly. Every natural number, a natural number is a rational number, but a rational number need not be a natural number. Okay. It says out here like we can write. We can write, like we write normal numbers, right? One, two, three, four. But you can always write these numbers in the format one, 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 one. Okay. This shows that every natural number can be written as the number itself, let's call it n upon one. Understood? Which is a rational number. Now, this is a normal number. These are basically natural numbers, integers, whatever. Okay? You can write it in the form of a rational number. Basically, you see, whenever we are writing normal numbers in life, like let's say 24, we just write 24. Actually, it is 24 upon 1. Right? Uh, for example, so whenever we write the final answer, we just write the 24. We do not write 24 upon 1. But if you have to understand, Consider of a ra rational number, every natural number is a rational number because they have a denominator, you know, which is one. Okay? Now, but none of the rational numbers like 5, okay, they are certain numbers, like in the book it's given as 5 upon 6 or uh, 3 upon 8 or 1 by 3. These are not natural numbers because if you try to compute them, if you try to reduce them, Okay, we will not get a single image. You can see that 5 and 6, they don't have a common factor, common division. Okay, it's not a normal number, but you can divide the 
Similarly, three by eight, okay, one an odd number, one's an even number, one by three. You know, if you compute this further, we get answers in decimals. But we're not going to get it in the form of an integer or a natural number. Understood? So this is what it means when they say, but none of the rational numbers, like these numbers, is a natural number. That's the statement. Every natural number, every natural number is a rational number, but a rational number may not or need not be a natural number. Please get this very clearly. Understood? That's very important. Okay. Now, zero is a rational number. Point number two, page number 55. Zero is a rational number. Okay. We can write zero in any one of the forms. You can write zero as it's given in the book again. Nice few examples. Zero upon one. I think that's the first one. Then you can write zero upon minus one. Okay. And you can write it as zero upon two. Any way you want. Okay. There's a couple of examples in the book. You can go through that. So it says we can write zero in any one of the forms. And so what? Thus, zero can be expressed as p upon q, where p is zero and q is any non-zero integer. Okay, p upon q. Now this becomes zero, and this one or zero upon minus two, anything. Okay, natural number, non-integer, uh, integers. Okay. Uh, the brief history of zero. zero. I was just doing my research yesterday. I kind of realized. I used to say like Aryabhata, okay, a great Indian mathematician. He gave the world zero. Okay, I used to say that he gave the world zero. He discovered zero. So I was partly correct, but I was partly uh, not too correct also. Yes, he gave the world zero, but zero was not discovered by Aryabhata. It was a Brahma Gupta, a scholar and a mathematician. He defined zero and his operation in 628 AD. That was quite a long time back. Okay, and the symbol for it was a dot underneath numbers. Then famous, our famous mathematician, Aryabhata, a great mathematician and an astronomer, used zero in the decimal system, which made him immortal. Okay, now the world, whenever the, we coin the term zero, normally what people would say is, it's Aryabhata. But he was the one who gave the word zero, and because of the number zero, we could expand further. Okay. There would be a bridge. Zero is always a bridge between the positive numbers and the negative negative numbers. Okay, you can see it in a number line. If you take a number line, zero is always that way. Okay. Now we move on to the third part. Okay? The third thing that says in the book, the rules. That's given in the book is every integer is a rational number, but a rational number need not be an integer. Okay. So it says okay, every number, listen with carefully. Every integer is a rational number, but a rational number need not be an integer. So I think that time we talked about the national number. Integer, there's a very uh, fine line of difference between these two. Sometimes they might be confusing, but sometimes they, it seems the same. Okay, now you know that integers, uh, what are integers? If I would like to recap with you guys over there in front of me, we would do a question and answer session. But since you're not there, uh, I would like to talk about, uh, I would have to tell you basically what an integer is. Okay, so right now I just drew a number line. Just keep a number line. Okay, and the point will be zero. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, this is minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, uh, so on, so on. Okay. Integers, if I think uh, we have done the chapter already, you know, the school is on. It is any negative number, 0, and the positive numbers. Okay. All these things would compute integers, right? So it says out there, every integer is a rational number, but a rational number needs not be an integer. So if you write normal numbers like 1, 2, 3, 4, okay, or even for that matter, minus 1, minus 3, minus 6, okay. you can always write them like this. 
initially they were integers, right? They were integers, all of them, right? But you can always write them in this format, like the way we wrote for natural numbers. Okay. So when we write it in this format, an integer turns into a rational number. Okay. Now, in general, any integer can be written as that number itself upon 1, which is a rational number. But rational numbers like 5 upon 7, minus 7 upon 8, 11 upon minus 6. Let me just write it for you. 5 upon 7, comma, uh, minus 7 upon 8, comma, and then 11 upon minus 6. Okay. Uh, cannot be integer. These are not integers. Again, as I told you when we did the number line, okay, zero is the midpoint. Uh, on this side, let's say the right hand side of zero, right hand side on my side, is positive numbers, and on the left hand side it will be negative numbers. Okay, but out there anyway, do you see any number in a fraction format? No, it's not in a fraction format. That's what they're trying to tell you. Okay, in general, any integer can be written as the number itself upon 1, which is a rational number, but rational numbers like these, 5 upon 7, 7 upon 8, 11 upon 6, when you compute them, if you take it further, try to solve them, get to an answer, okay, it will always be in decimal points or a mixed fraction, whatever. Okay, so that cannot happen. An integer has to be a single number itself. There are no decimal points, there's no trick, uh, mixed fraction, they cannot be a simple fraction, no, that's not possible. This is what they're trying to tell you. Okay, so these rational numbers are not integers, thus the statement that says point number three, every integer is a rational number, but a rational number need not be an integer. Okay, so that statement stands true now. Now we move on to the fourth one. Okay, every fraction is a rational number, but a rational number need not be a fraction. Okay, now I think this is very important because if you've been paying attention and the moment I told you about rational numbers, I wrote it in a fraction format, right? Because that's what we are much more comfortable with when we grew up with maths. Fraction, fraction, I think it's taught in lower classes also. And then comes this thing called rational number. It looks like a fraction in most of the Okay, so it says okay, every fraction is a natural number, but a, uh, sorry, rational number, but a rational number need not be a fraction, okay? So it says out there, let P upon Q be any fraction, okay? P upon Q. Let P upon Q be any fraction. Then P and Q are natural numbers. Since every natural number is an integer, therefore P and Q are integers, okay? So it says out there that P and Q are natural numbers. Okay, so let's uh, say two, let's make P two or Q, 3, okay? That's what they're trying to tell you, okay? Let P upon Q be any fraction, then P and Q are natural numbers. Since every natural number is an integer, they are integers also, as I told you earlier, therefore P and Q are also integers. So if these are natural numbers, these are also integers, so P and Q are also integers. That's what they are trying to tell you. The Rule, rule number four in the book. Okay? Thus, the fraction P upon Q is a quotient of two integers such that Q is not zero. So it says out here, thus the fraction P upon Q or 2 upon 3 is a quotient of two integers. It's a quotient of two integers such that Q is not equal to zero. We don't have a zero here, we have three. Okay? Hence, P upon Q is a rational number. Understood? A number like uh, 7 upon minus 8 is a rational number, but it is 7 upon minus 8 is a rational number, okay? But it is not a fraction since its denominator is minus 8 is not a rational number. Understood? Okay. So 7 upon 8, a number like uh, 7 upon minus 8 is a rational number. But it is not a, because in fractions we cannot have the denominator as a negative one. Okay? Now, 
Um, I think one of the basic difference that you have is a fraction is derived from whole numbers and rational num uh, number is derived from an integer. Okay, and that is I think one of the basic difference between a fraction and integer. Okay. Uh, book says numerator, uh, then as we move on, the book says numerator and denominator of p upon q, where q is not a zero, is a rational number. It has one term, which is okay, p upon q. As I told you, children, uh, this, you're going to see this whenever you talk about rational number, this p e and q is everywhere. I don't know, it seems like the maths, like say, let it be x. Right? I don't know why, why, why not let it be A with B, B, it's let it be X, so in rational numbers we use C, B upon Q. Okay, now, so out here, B upon Q or, let's put it into rational number again, this is the, B is the numerator, these are the numerators now, okay, and Q is the, numerators and denominators. Right. So, I'm sure you know about this by now, since you there is no fraction, the terms we are going to use in rational numbers is also C. Okay, now, we move on. This is just a simple, I think, this is just a recap, this is numerator and denominator. Uh, we need to move on to now, positive and negative now, rational numbers. Okay, now, a rational number is said to be positive if its numerator and denominator are either both positive or both negative. Okay. If you go into the book, there are a couple of examples given. 5 upon 7, okay. and then 29 upon 80, right? And then we have uh, minus 6 upon minus 19. Minus 19, okay. And then we have minus 27 upon minus 83 and the topic that we are dealing with today is positive rational numbers Seven. Both are positive numbers. You can see any minus signs anywhere. Rational number, uh, positive rational number. 29 upon 18. Okay. Both positive. So it's a positive rational number. Minus 6 upon minus 19. I mean, some of you might know. It's a very minus there. How can it be a positive? I hope you know that these two minuses they cancel. So finally, the final answer will be. 6 upon 19. Similarly, minus 27 minus 83, this minus is greater cancel. So the final answer will be the same. Or you can do it so far. Okay, so it's like that. If you get these kind of sums, uh, you should always look at the signs and the sign rules. You need to remember that. Okay, if you forget the sign rules, you need to recap because these small little things can make so much of a difference. I've been telling you in the class itself, you need to do maths is all about few little basics. That's in its right place. When you remember when you do it, it becomes easy. Okay. Now. now we move on to itself and the whole rational number becomes a positive number. But in this case, 
If only one of them is negative and one of them is positive, it doesn't matter, numerator, denominator, anyone, in any order. Okay, uh, I think uh, the examples given in the book is minus 7 upon 9. Okay, then 28 upon minus 59. Right? Another example given is minus 37 upon 11. Okay, and uh, the last one that is given up there is. 36, 36, 36 upon minus 2, 1, 7. Okay, so these are all negative rational numbers. How? Minus into plus, equal to minus. Minus into plus, minus. Minus into plus, minus, minus into plus. Okay, if you follow the sign rules, these will always be negative rational numbers. Okay. Now, if you go on to the next page, page number 56, it says, every negative integer is a negative rational number. Okay. A uh, few negative integers, negative numbers, minus 2, minus 6, minus 17, so on and so forth. You can find any negative number. It won't be too large. It might just confuse you. Okay, we can always write them in this format, right? There's nothing wrong with that. It's not wrong. It just might not be by a the most space, but it's not wrong. Okay, actually, they technically they're supposed to be like this. So this is a rational number, right? If you do not write this once, if you remove all the denominators, they just look like integers, right? But whenever you put this one, they look like a rational number. That's what they're trying to tell you. Every negative integer is a negative rational number. Okay. So you can express it. You can go on and on. You can try a few examples on your own. Okay. Make it clearer for yourself. Okay. And it says out here, the rational number zero is neither positive nor negative. Very true. Very true. Again, the number line. Zero in the middle. Okay. One. All positive numbers. Right? All negative numbers. Okay. Integers. Okay. C. This is the dividing line. The border. Is what we call it. Okay. It's neither positive, neither negative. Zero in itself is without any signs. Okay, now, two important properties of rational number, of T1, equivalent rational numbers, okay, uh, that is much more relatable to us right now, which is more important, okay. Uh, if you go into the book, it says if P upon Q is a rational number, I told you you're going to encounter a lot of P upon Qs, P upon Q is a rational number and M is a non-zero integer. M. M is a non-zero integer then P upon Q is equal to P upon Q is equal to P into M Okay, equivalent rational number. Okay, so if you have, for example, if you have to find, if you have to find um, equivalent ratio or equivalent rational number of, or if you go back into the book, uh, it says find four rational numbers equivalent to each other of each of the rational numbers. Okay, so I think they have given out there as uh, 5 upon 8. Right, so it says that you have to find four rational numbers equivalent to each of the rational numbers. So, uh, four, sorry, four numbers, four numbers from here. Okay, so the format is P upon Q is equal to P into M, 
upon m. Okay. So basically what we are doing is we have to just uh, see multiples of 5 we basically will be doing that. Okay. 5 to the 10, 5 to the 15, 5 to the 20, 5 to the 25. We are just doing multiples of the mm, numerator and the denominator. Okay. So let's start with the first one. 5 upon 8 into 2. So this will be 10 into the 16. The next one, 5 upon 8 into 3 into 3. Okay. So this will be 5 into 15 into 3 into 3. Okay. 5 upon 8 into 3 into 20 to the okay. so we have 1, 2, 3, and the last one. 5 upon 8 into 5. Five. So this will be 5 into 25, 5 into the 40. Okay, so if you look at it out here, we have given. First one is 10 upon 60, right? Second one is 50 upon 24. Third one is 20 upon 32. And the fourth one is 25 upon 40. Okay. So these are the four rational numbers which are equivalent to each other. See? Equivalent to each other. Okay. We just multiply them with the common m, common integer m, uh, those are 2, 3, 4, and 5. That's how we get it. You could have a question. Okay. Uh, now, now, there are a few examples given in the book. I did the first one for you. There are two or three more given. Or you can go through that. It's pretty much easy. The concept is the same, whatever I've been telling you. Okay. That is the whole concept of it. Okay. Now, uh, I think we should go and move on to exercise 3A on page number 60. Okay. So it says out here. Five rational numbers equivalent to each other of the following rational numbers. Okay. So, first number one, first one, I think the first one is three upon. Okay. Now we need to find five rational numbers equivalent to each of the following, equivalent to this three upon five. Okay. So, the first one we will do. Six upon six, and the M will be six of them. So six is 
these genes. So this is the third part. So therefore, the five. Valid, rational, numbers are okay. one, one, The example that I gave you that time, you just have to follow that example and compute this. Okay. Now, uh, question number two, although it says, uh, okay, now, oh, yeah. homework. I, I'm sorry, uh, I, I give homework. Okay. Online, offline, classroom teaching, WhatsApp teaching, I'm always good with homework because math is something like, you know, uh, it's not something that you study, memorize, put it inside your head and try to recap. No, you understand. Right? When the teacher's teaching, you pay attention, you understand, you look at what he's doing, what is he saying, is it getting into your head or not? And then, if you feel like yes, I've understood, how do you check it? Sir? Right? You practice, you try to do the sound. Like, it's like driving a car, learning how to ride a bicycle. Theory is easy, right? Put your Get onto the cycle, balance it, start pedaling, the cycle will move. It's not that easy. First time, it's all about getting a center of gravity. You fall so many times, then find your brain kind of adjust and find the center of gravity, then you can balance the cycle. Then only you can pedal and move forward. Driving a car, start the car, right? Put in the ignition, change the gear, okay? Press the clutch, change the gear, then release the clutch slowly, press the exit, the car sounds so easy. Try to do it on your own if you don't know how to drive, it's time to go. That's why so many accidents happen. Okay, so maths you need to practice. Okay, so question number two. Let's go to question number two. It is, uh, write each of the following rational numbers with the positive denominator. So we have the rational number here is 3 upon minus 5. And the question says, uh, this rational number, you need to have a positive denominator. Okay, minus 5. So how do you convert this into a positive denominator? Okay, so what you do, the next step is 3 upon minus 5 into minus 1 upon minus 2. So what are the signs? Okay. So three one the three.